Hey there, calculators. It's good to see you and talk to you again. It's Mr. Leavenworth here to talk you through a lesson all about slope fields. Uh, so when we're looking at differential equations, there's lots of different ways to go about solving them, or more importantly, uh, visualizing them. And, and slope fields are one way to do that. So we're going to kind of dive right into example number one here on the video guide. Um, and it says, draw a slope field that represents the family of curves that are the solution for the differential equation dy over dx equals y. So what this means is when we generate a slope field or graph a slope field, we are essentially going to use each grid point on the graph and represent the slope of the tangent line to a function at that point. Now, this particular uh, differential equation, we are just using the y coordinate. So when y equals 3, the slope of the tangent line at that point is 3. Uh, when y equals 0, we have a horizontal tangent line. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go by y coordinate, since there is no dependency on the x variable here, and we are going to just loosely sketch uh, a small line segment with that slope. So for instance, if I go to y equals 3, I'm going to just slowly sketch a slope of positive 3 through each grid point. It's that simple. Uh, and then for 2, uh, we want to sketch a slope of 2. It's going to be a little bit flatter, but not much. I'll try and make it a little more evident. I think that's all right. It's not as steep as our y equals 3. Uh, and then we're going to keep going down. So, so a slope of positive 1 looks like this, making a nice 45-degree angle at that intersection. And then uh, on the x-axis, y equals 0. So our tangent lines, and it might be a little difficult to see here, uh, are going to be horizontal because our differential equation has a, our differential equation is the y-coordinate. Now when we get down into the negatives, our slope field should have negative slopes. So negative 1. and negative 2. It's going to be a little bit steeper. And then negative 3 is going to be not impossibly steep, but definitely noticeably steeper. And so that is what a slope field looks like. We typically draw these little slope renderings on each grid point of the graph. And now Part B says we're going to sketch multiple uh, graphs or the family of solutions. So the way we do that is we pick a starting point. Uh, I'm going to pick 1, 1 for this first example. I'm going to use the, kind of this dark purple color to make it a little bit thicker of a line. And I'm just going to kind of follow these slope fields both to the right and to the left. And when I get there, what we see for this first line is we have almost what looks like an exponentially shaped curve. All right, that's one option. What if we picked a different option? What if we picked a starting point of uh, 2 comma negative 2? We have a starting point. We're going to follow going to look like this. And it usually helps. I'm doing this with my iPad. I'm actually kind of twisting my iPad and getting a good sketch here. And you see, because of this horizontal section at y equals 0, we're kind of all filtering towards the same point. Uh, let's try one more. Uh, what if we did a one on the y-axis? What if we pick, or the x-axis, I'm sorry. What if we pick 3 comma 0? Well, it's horizontal to the right. And it's horizontal to the left. 
So what we've done in this problem are two separate things. Part A was just to generate the slope field. That's what we call it. We generate those little line segments. And then part B is we actually use it to draw some graphs that if we were to take the derivative of any of these functions, it would have the derivative of one. We're going to do one more example with a little bit different of a differential equation, and then we're going to do some AP style problems at the end. So here we go. Example number two, we're going to scroll down, and you can see it's the same style of question where part A is to generate the slope field, part B is to, uh, they give us actually a specific condition. We'll talk about that in a moment. So part A says draw a slope field that represents the solutions of x squared minus 2x minus 3. So in other words, if I went to an x-coordinate of 1, I would plug in 1 into this differential equation, 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. Uh, that is 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is negative 4. So anywhere I have an x value of 1, I have a slope of negative and I'm doing my best to kind of estimate that negative 4. Now, in the first example, we had a slope field or a differential equation that was just y. We didn't care about the x-coordinate. This is kind of the other hand of that, where we don't have the variable y in our differential equation. We just have the x variable. All right, well, let's plug in 2. 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3. So we have a slope of negative 3. So we're going to be a little bit flatter, but not much. We still want a pretty good steep slope here. It should just be noticeably flatter compared to x equals 1. And we're going to keep kind of escalating this. So if we have an x-coordinate of 3, that's 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 3. So that is 9 minus 6 minus 3, which is 0. So we have a horizontal set of slope fields here. Or not a horizontal set of slope fields, but a horizontal set of segments. Uh, and we're going to do that with 4. 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. That's 16 minus 8, which is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So we have really, really steep line segments here. But positive because our uh, the slope we found there was a positive 5. All right, now we're going to kind of move backwards. It really doesn't matter which uh, x value you start with because we do need to generate the whole field. Uh, fairly often on an AP test, there will be one question on the free response where they ask you to generate a small slope field. Uh, very typically in the multiple choice section, you'll see some problems like the ones we're about to do down below. But let's finish this example number two. Uh, we did one, we did two, we did x equals three, x equals four, x equals zero. Um, zero minus two times zero is zero, minus three is negative three. So that's going to match what we did at x equals 2. So we're going to try and mimic that slope. It's not perfect. No one is going to be breaking out a ruler to check to see how good you were at this. But it's good to get the general idea of what is going on. All right, negative 1. We're going to plug that in. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times negative 1. So that's plus 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 3. Oh, we have another zero. That's interesting. All right, and we're going to keep going. If we plug in negative two, we get four plus four minus three, we get our positive. Oh, we have a pattern here. We have positive five again. It's a really steep line. Uh, if we put in negative 3, that would be 9 plus 6 minus 3. We have a slope of 12. So at this point, if we were doing this on a calculator, 
you would just essentially see nearly vertical line segments here. Uh, and then I wonder if we put in negative 4, if it's going to get even steeper. Uh, 16 plus 8, 24 minus 3 is 21. So yeah, it is okay at that point. If we are dealing with slopes in the 20s, to just represent that as nearly vertical. Okay. Now, there's a few things that happen here when we're doing a problem like this. You may have, and forgive me for erasing this work up here, you may have noticed that this differential equation is a quadratic. And you can factor this just like you would factor a quadratic in your early algebra courses. And sure enough, we have zeros at 3 and negative 1, and that is exactly where we see those negative or those horizontal slopes. So there's a ton of different ways to do these, but you do need to have a small line segment at every grid point. Uh, and then we're going to head to part B. It says use the slope field to draw the graph of the particular, that means a singular solution, of the differential equation with the initial condition, if x equals 0, then y equals 2. That is another way to say start at 0, 2, and follow the path. So we are going to go up to the left. And we know that it flattens out and then starts taking off severely, steeply, and again, this isn't a perfect science. We're not going to come out with some artistically beautiful answer. But it's best to kind of take nice short strokes here. And we're going to find ourselves flattening out and working back up. So it's interesting that we have what appears to be some sort of a cubic function. But that makes sense because if we were to take the antiderivative of this differential equation, if we were to solve this as you might have started to solve in the last section, we're going to get some version of a cubic function because an antiderivative raises the exponents by one degree. All right. So you've gotten two concrete examples of graphing, generating a slope field, and then graphing particular solutions on it. We're going to kind of get into the AP realm a little bit and do some reasoning with slope fields, where you're usually given a slope field, and sometimes you have to pick the differential equation. Sometimes you have to select the slope field that goes with the equation, and we're actually going to do one of each of those. So we're given a slope field here in number three. And we're asked to select which of the following differential equations represents that slope field. Well, I notice a few things. First of all, I notice that I have zero slopes when y is zero. And I have zero slopes when x is zero. Let's see if that information helps us. So... I know immediately, after just looking at that piece of information, that it is not part A. Because if I have any situation where y is 0, this particular equation is telling me that it's going to be the x-coordinate that dictates what our slope is. And that's not the case here, because anywhere y is 0 in our slope fields, we stay 0 regardless of what the x-coordinate is. So it can't be that. Uh, we have x times y, which is, for right now, a viable candidate. We might be coming back there. Right now, just with those zeros, we don't kind of break any rules. Uh, letter C is no good for the same reason that letter A is, because if we 0 out y or we 0 out x, the other coordinate is going to dictate, and we are showing that any time that x is 0 or y is 0, we have a horizontal slope. And then finally, we're looking at choice D. The derivative, or the differential equation, is x over y. 
This is interesting for the fact that we have y in the denominator here. If this equation was the slope field, we would be seeing something very, very different happening when y equals 0. We would be seeing an undefined or a truly vertical slope. So because we can actually rule out a, c, and d, we can feel confident saying that b is the correct answer. But let's, let's kind of unpack this understanding a little bit more. This is a product. We're saying the slope of the line segments here is a product of the x and the y coordinates which means that in quadrant one, we should have a positive slope everywhere else because we have a positive x and a positive y. Same thing in the third quadrant because we have a negative x times a negative y and we should be getting positive slopes, and we do. Similarly, the second and fourth quadrant should have negative slopes, and we do. So between process of elimination and then kind of corroborating that evidence on our slope field, we can feel even more confident in saying that choice B is the proper choice to select here. Number three, the one that we're looking at right now, is a really, really common example of a multiple choice AP test, or AP question, I should say, related to slope fields. Now, we're going to peel down to number four, and this does the reverse. This gives us the equation and then we have to pick the proper slope field. And they're lettered at the bottom of each picture, A, B, C, and D. This is sometimes a little bit trickier because it's really, um, it's really time consuming to kind of go through each slope field and do the same thing we just did with number three. However, we can work backwards. I'm looking at number four from an algebraic perspective and I can see that I can immediately factor out a y. And you're allowed to do this. And furthermore, I can factor that x squared minus 4 to x plus 2 times x minus 2. What this means is we have horizontal slopes. This is the reason we give you space on the side to work. We have horizontal slopes at y equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. If we're really, really lucky, that will help us and just get us straight to the right answer. If we're not as lucky, it might at least help us rule out some. So we're going to cross out any of these graphs that don't have horizontal slopes at y equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. Letter a only has zero slopes at x equals zero and y equals two, so this is no good. Uh, let's see. Letter B has, ooh, I think we're on to something here, has horizontal slopes at y equals zero and horizontal slopes at x equals negative two and x equals positive 2. Now, I'm not saying that this is the correct answer, but it definitely passes the criteria for our first pass. Uh, and it looks like, unfortunately for us, that letter C and letter D have the same setup. So what else could we do to eliminate some of these options? Hmm. We could plug in values. Um, actually, I'm looking at letter D now, and I see that they have included zero slopes at x equals zero, which we know is not something we're interested in. So we can cross out letter D. So now we're stuck between B and C. We can look at... <laughs> we can look at a point where the slopes are different. So what I mean by that, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here... I'm looking in letter B at 0, 1, or 0, negative 1, I have a positive slope. And in letter C at 0, negative 1, I have a negative slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 0, negative 1 and see 
what answer I get. Do I get a positive answer or a negative answer? So when I say plug that in, I mean literally everywhere I see an x, I put a 0. So this is 0 squared times y minus 4 times y. So I get 0 plus 4 equals 4. So what this is saying to me is that at 0 comma negative 1, I should see a line segment with a slope of positive 4. And since at that point on graph C, we see a negative slope, we can cross that out. And we are left with a choice, a correct choice, of letter B. All right. This is a good overview. This is a video that I would definitely watch in its entirety. If you want to pause it or slow down or repeat or speed up, you can do all of that. Uh, but this is a good overview of how slope fields work. So if you have questions, by all means, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video. If you're watching this in Canvas, you can ask your teacher or send me an email. But this is a good uh, example of all the different types of problems you are going to see with slope fields. Thanks for working with me. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.